Your credit score is a number from 300 to 850 that helps determine your credit worthiness. Now in this video, I'm gonna break the score down for you and also give you some tips to bring your score up. Also, if you stick around with me, so I'll give you a bonus that's gonna help your credit score month after month. Coming up. What's up everybody, this is your boy Jacques. Now if you're new to this channel, I'm a licensed realtor and mortgage lender in the state of Florida. Now my goal is to help you gain wealth through real estate and also help tackle those questions that you might have. So let's get started. Now as I stated in this video, this week I'm gonna talk about your credit score. Now your credit score is the number between 300 to 850 that depicts uh, the consumer's credit worthiness. The higher the score, the better the borrower looks to potential lenders. A credit score is based on credit history, number of open accounts, total levels of debt, repayment history, and other factors. Now again, your credit score also helps determine whether you get loans or not and the rates that you pay. Your credit score determines a lot more than you think. It determines your premium that you pay for car insurance and also homeowners insurance as well. Now as I stated, please stick around for the whole video for some tips and tricks that's gonna help boost your score up this year. And also at the end, I have a bonus for you that's gonna help your credit score month after month. Now let's start off with the credit mix. So the credit mix is basically a variety of loans in your credit file. Now, a healthy credit mix usually consists of both installment loans and revolving credit. Now these usually have a fixed end date and a payment due each month. Now the second type will be what's called revolving credit. Now revolving credit will be for things like credit cards or home equity lines of credit. Now with these, they don't have a specific end date or a set balance. Now a good healthy mix for this 10% would be if you had a mortgage, an auto loan, and two different type of credit cards. And that way you can help this part of the credit score out. Now to the second part of the credit score, which is 15%, it's your credit history length. Now with this, it's very important. The age of your credit cards matter. For example, I always advise people when they turn 18 to get a credit card and keep it as long as they can. Now with some credit cards, as you know, might have an annual membership fee. Now, since I used to work for a big credit card company, which was American Express, I found out one little trick that a lot of people usually don't know, which is if you have a credit card and you're paying 95, 100, some credit cards go up to 550, such as the platinum card, you're able to go ahead and just call them and convert that credit card that has the annual membership fee to a card with no membership fee. So don't cancel out the card, keep it if you can, just give them a call and ask them if they can change your card from an annual membership fee card to a non-annual membership fee card. Now if you do that, that's gonna keep your credit history length as high as possible, so that way if you cancel out the card, you don't lose all that time. And I do not recommend for you to cancel out any credit cards if you had it for a long, long time. Make sure you weigh out the pros and cons if you have to cancel out a card. If the card has no annual membership fee, just keep it in the back of your pocket. Now to the third part of your credit score, is new credit. With this, it's very self-explanatory. Any new credit cards that you have is 10% of it, and also any hard inquiries or hard pulls as we call it. Now with a hard inquiry or a hard pull, it's basically when a creditor is asking to see your credit file to see if they're gonna give you the line of credit or not. So basically don't go into a frenzy of trying to apply for two, three, four different credit cards. Okay, that's gonna throw up a lot of red flags and alarms on your credit profile. So definitely don't do that because that's gonna drop this 10% down. So again, try to avoid that as much as possible. Now since we're talking about hard inquiries, I'm gonna go ahead and drop a quick gem on you guys. Now, I get this question a lot. If you're shopping for a home and you don't like what the first lender is giving you, I just wanna let you know, you do have the right and the option to go ahead and check out prices from a different lender. Now I'm gonna give you guys the facts because a lot of people are weary of this and scared to go ahead and talk to a different lender. I'm gonna give it to you straight from the Equifax's website. I'm gonna drop the link below and also you can read it on the screen. Now verbatim, it says, if you're shopping for a new auto or mortgage loan or a new utility provider, the multiple inquiries are generally counted as one inquiry for a given period of time. The period of time may vary depending on the credit scoring model used, but it's typically from 14 to 45 days. This allows you to check different lenders and find out the best loan terms for you. Now again, straight from the horse's mouth, 
you can go ahead and shop around for a different lender. Now that may be bad for me, but again, my goal is to help you make sure you get the best interest rate and best loan for you so that way it can help you and your family. Now with those three things out of the way, that's about 35% of your score right there if you have those things down packed. Now fourth on your credit score is your credit utilization. Now your credit utilization is basically your total debt divided by your total available credit. So just to break it down and to make it simple, if you have a line of credit of about $10,000 and you rent up about $6,000 worth of debt, your credit utilization is now 60%. Now the last and final piece is your payment history. Now this piece is worth 35% of your credit score. Now this part is very important. Basically, try to pay your bills on time. If you can't pay off your bill in full to help that credit utilization, I would advise you just make sure you pay at least a minimum payment each month or maybe more so you're not paying as much interest on the account. Now I know online everyone's trying to keep your credit utilization under 30%. Me personally, I would advise you to keep it maybe less than that. Maybe try to keep it 10% or less or maybe nothing at all. I would never advise you to run a rolling balance on a credit card so that way you can pay interest. If you can, pay it off in full each month. That way your score goes up as high as possible. Also, you're not spending any money on interest as well. Why spend money on interest if you can? Now, if you have two, three, four credit cards and you're paying them all on time, that's gonna be great on your credit report and credit score because it's gonna show all green check marks. Whereas if you're not paying it on time, one late payment can have a drastic effect on your credit score. Now, I appreciate you guys sticking with me till the end. Now, as promised, I have a special surprise for you. I was able to partner up with a company called Rent Reporters, which actually is gonna help your credit score each month. Now, with Rent Reporters, most people see an average credit score increase of about 40 points in about 10 days. So, go ahead and sign up. You're gonna see the link in the description box below. Make sure you sign up as soon as possible so that way you can increase your score. Question of the day. What part of the credit score do you need help with the most? Please drop your answers in the comment section below. Now, thanks guys. I appreciate you watching this video today. Make sure you smash that like button, subscribe to my channel, and make sure that notification bell is on. As always, have a great day, great week, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.